Winston Churchill was not a born painter. He came to what would become his favorite pastime later in life, in 1915, at age 40, after a disastrous campaign in the Dardanelles during the First World War. From the horror of defeat, Churchill sought refuge and release in the form of painting. He picked up a brush, at, at first timidly, then after some coaxing and encouragement by family and friends, he picked up his largest brush and attacked the canvas with daubs of brilliant blue, white, greens, yellows and orange. The brighter the better. It was, as he later wrote, a joyride in a paint box. For Churchill, painting was a passion. It afforded one of the busiest men in the world a chance to slow down, observe the natural world around him, and compose what he saw on a canvas. A little dash of purple here, a little spot of orange there, could change, could improve, a composition greatly. He did the same with words, of course, when composing his great speeches. And he did the same with geopolitics, building an alliance here, hosting a summit there, it really was a mark of his great mind. This painting is a recent acquisition to the collection at America's National Church and Museum. It is called Firth of Forth, painted in the early or mid-1920s, where Churchill captures the River Forth as it flows into the North Sea in Scotland. Standing on the shore, looking west, he paints several World War I-era British Navy warships steaming into port as the sun sets in the distance. It is counterintuitive, but for such a well-recognized war leader, Churchill did not paint military scenes often, making this canvas extremely rare. Churchill would have known these ships well from his time as First Lord of the Admiralty during the war. At the time he made this picture, however, they were being decommissioned and slated for the scrapyard. So as the sun sets, it is almost a melancholic picture the end of an era. Since the 1960s, this canvas has been titled A Distant View of Venice, thought to be uh, a scene of that great Italian city. However, recent research has shown that this is not, in fact, Venice, but Miami, Florida, where Churchill spent about six to seven weeks before coming to Westminster College to deliver his Iron Curtain speech on March 5th, 1946. Uh, we see Churchill standing on the shore of Miami Beach, looking across the Bay of Biscayne at the distant skyline of Miami, as it was in 1946. The sun is setting in the distance, and Churchill's capturing the dramatic clouds and reflected sun in the sea. It's really a remarkable painting. If we compare this painting to contemporary images of the same scene, it's clear Winston Churchill painted this from Miami Beach, just across the street from where he was composing and thinking about the Iron Curtain speech. So just as Churchill is showing the sunset in Miami, he's imagining an Iron Curtain descending across the continent of Europe. In 1953, during his second stint as Prime Minister, Winston Churchill visited Jamaica along with his wife Clementine and their daughter Mary. Churchill loved the surf and the sea and the people of Jamaica. He captured this palm tree on the beach, leaning dramatically out towards the sea. His bodyguard, Sergeant Edmund Murray, was along on this trip and captured some candid photographs, snapshots really, of the Churchill family and of this tree. If you look closely in some of the photographs, you can see Churchill enjoying a swim and their daughter Mary finding some comfort in the shade from this tree. I invite you to join us here at America's National Church and Museum at Westminster College for this extraordinary special exhibition, Winston Churchill, A Passion for Painting. If you can't make us in person, check out our catalog, which you can find online on the museum store.